Mark Flood. Spinster abstraction, bitch moves, Chelsea whores, and protest signs. Let's get into it. Schwarzenegger, Reagan, and Bush. Four more years and don't be a narc. We can start there. If you want to pull up that um, karma gallery page. That was probably one of the best ones that when I was doing research on this guy, I found like the most like uh, visually. I think it's like right here. Scrolling to the top. Okay. This actually might not be. Yeah, these ones. This is in protest signs. We can start here. It doesn't uh oh they are here. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I think they're all in like this kind of area. I mean, get into it, bro. Tell me about Mark Flood. What was the original I guess what was like the original draw to Mark Flood? I mean I I, I think I have might have an idea now, but like I guess get into it. Well these um protest signs nineteen ninety two um were the first Mark Flood pieces that I was exposed to. Um, as you can see here, we got uh, George, American flag print, yellow backdrop, almost a stamp like face of the president, be a narc, um, scroll down. I think there's an image, because this was going on, this image. <laughs> Bush is God with uh, Arnold portrait, portraiture. Um, these were protest signs made during the 92 riots in Los Angeles. Um, and the, above, the one above this um, Bush is God image, the vote for law and order, is uh, an image of Rodney King. So that was... Um, time and place and uh spirit and uh protest um you know he was there uh at the republican national convention i believe a few weeks prior to the election with cardboard and uh spray paint and um initially created the stencils um, and it would hand, hand them out to uh, those protesting, um, protesting the current conditions of the country. And this is, this is Clinton Bush. And uh, th- th- at this point in time, there was a 12 year stranglehold by the Republican Party on the candidacy of the, pres- of the president. Um, the 12 year grip on the White House. And so Clinton defeating Bush was a, um, we, I, I was too young to have firsthand experience of the election and, and, and the consequences or the um, current state of affairs. But I would say Bill Clinton and, and George Bush are probably like the two names that ring the loudest bell in terms of American politics in my lifetime. Yeah. No, I would say like, I was growing up and like my dad talking about Bush and like, you and like, I guess like the, the current kind of um, just feelings toward him and like how his, or people are just thinking like he's like dumb or some reason or like something about his daughter or something like that. I feel like they were kind of like polarizing figures regardless if you were even like a Democrat or a Republican. I feel like, like he was someone that I don't know he just didn't have like the best type of I guess Bush more so than Clinton but then again maybe Clinton too as well um his like kind of uh reputation his demeanor uh, yeah I mean these I mean when I when I originally like these obviously were the first ones that stood out to me and that's just based off aesthetic alone and there I mean like I think we've even talked about this like where like we've had I think we say that a lot (laughs) <laughs> we've talked about this but um aesthetically i feel like these are like the if i look at it and i look at these ones i think of like the typical kind of american tropes that we 
gravitate to like aesthetically like even like the color palettes like there's something that's so I don't know when I look at it I think I think 1992 I think all of the work from 1992 was a lot of these like I don't know how to describe like these like symbols in America or like a certain font that he uses or like kind of playing with like kind of um, political figures or something like that but I think I think initially like these things are I don't know almost like like the way he uses words like it, it's very vague but it triggers something you know it's something that it's almost like the it's the unspoken truths yeah but it, it yeah exactly and it's like this sort of like um like it's like you almost, it's very ironic it's like very ironic you can tell like he's being very oh. you know he's joking he's taking like a like a dig at like certain like obviously the political kind of like um situation and just because i've been listening to it recently it's been on my mind because i may have brought it up on a previous pod but what i love so much about uh the life of pablo is the 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 humor and the self-deprecation in the verbiage and in the lyrics and in this case in the text uh, i think there's like a similar awareness and you know of these of these societal observations um and it's the vulgarity of the text the image come coming together um i mean they're almost yeah. like like they're almost like i mean like everything like he's saying is like very like dystopic and i feel like he has this very kind of like dystopic play on words um but like like things like like market correction or god less america like or creating like these kind of billboards or protest signs almost with these kind of again like these antithetical like kind of statements of like destroying the environment make new jobs like i think these are the protest signs of like the 1992 and like things like that fit in this 1992 section were very just like like taking the piss out of out of i don't know just like something that i'm nothing takes the piss out of art more than a painting that says another painting yeah in the, the, the there's the, the the words that he puts on there are trigger such a yeah no like almost like you you instantly get what he's trying to get at like like it's, it's three more paintings very ironic um well i wrote drop a letter and i think that's i mean I, it, it could be poking fun at just language and diction and how fragile words can be by the you know the drop of a letter how it changes it you know proud to be an american or see america fist in place of first rust jesus instead of trust jesus um, trespass trespassers will be hot instead of shot um, ugly art is how he describes it i mean his there's there's different there's yeah. different there's a variation to his work to where i i think some of it could it's easier to argue that there is like less aesthetic value in, because of its I guess just like poignant nature, but I think some, like this work especially is very stimulating for me just to um, look at. Like I would like to have this on my wall. Yeah, you know? you're right because like honestly, when I was going, because like initially I looked at these images and I was like, okay, I like this. But then like the more I looked at all of his art and all of his exhibitions, I kept like reflecting on like the validity of his art and like is it good or is it bad or like like I almost like like we could recreate this like we could easily recreate this or easily piece these things together but then again i just i just started thinking about okay but like he's highlighting something you know just because it was made and almost put together in almost like a non-luxurious or stereotypically like like a really good craft i guess what i'm trying to say doesn't mean like what he's highlighting doesn't have a very right. meaning you know um, and I guess, again, like going back to like this kind of like ironic thing, I feel like there's something about like 
the irony and like almost like when I think about like billboards or marketing or like promotion in America, they say something, but they mean something completely different. Um, and I think that's a good reflecting on like how America doesn't always mean what it says. And I think there's a couple good ones where it's like something about like, you know, diamonds are forever. And there's one image, um, where it's like the, the diamond's gone. You know what I mean? And I kept thinking about like, kind of, um, like really deeply about like how like the, like the artifice of like billboards or protest signs or marketing or promotion that I feel like he kind of plays with a lot. And I think we'll get into like a couple different exhibitions that he was doing, but um, just like all these different artifacts that surround this kind of, how would you, what would you say like a, like a common uh, dictum of American advertising. Um, and just yeah. kind of hammering down on those phrases to make you believe or reinforce some cultural stigma. But I think the undercurrent is what he's kind of highlighting. Is this like this real truth or this real, is this real thing that what people are thinking? It's almost like tongue in cheek, you know? No, it, you said it perfectly. Um, he, it's, it, this, it, this, this, this despise of uh, pop or consumer or celebrity culture um, and even sort of questioning the formality of art or the world and the institutions with which it's placed and I think there's always uh, maybe not always but a contradiction of him because I believe that he's represented by the Perez projects in Berlin and LA. Those are one of my favorites. Yeah, I think these are right here. As well as, um, as well as the Zach Fuhr Gallery in 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 Chelsea, in the city, and uh, because a lot of what he talks about, and his like statements about even uh, artists who seek for their art to be understood and him calling it pathetic and his, his lack of attendance at certain um, openings or, or uh, ex exhibitions of his own and like sending doppelgangers and like marking works under separate pseudonyms. Um, he, but he's also, you know, he, there, there was a, in one article that he, you know, be, he'll, 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 he'll uh, show, his work in like a basement in San Francisco. I believe that was, um, it was gold, ever gold projects or something along those lines. But this spot on Minnesota street in San Francisco and these other spots where, you know, he didn't have his first solo show, I think until he was in his mid forties and now he's about 55. And, uh, you know, it's subversive and provocative. And I think, he's commenting on something that he seems to be a part of still on some level, um, which I guess even you can be aware of the, your platform and your place whilst, and, and while still like participating, but just like using that participation as uh, a loudspeaker or, you know, as a, as a um, platform to, maybe uh, remove the, myst the, the mysticism and the um, operation of uh, an institution or a museum. I think, you know, one of his, one of his pieces is, is says, uh, whore, it's whore museums. Like, and he, he may be still showing in a museum and that's where like the relationship is foggy and becomes like a clouded mess to, 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 to decipher like how true someone is to their persona. Because I feel like I was, I was thinking that, you know, like Marcus Stabi, Mark Flood, uh, all my favorite artists, his name is Mark. I don't know if they're my favorite artists, but just these guys that on some level I, 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 I have a sense or an, I, I feel where they're coming from and I have like a degree of understanding, but it's, it's hard to 
not only defend, but to take serious or take too serious. Um, I feel like a lot of the work that we talk, that we talk about at times is sort of a, a, a aligned with that. Um, yeah. No, I mean, thinking. I mean, like, yeah, cause like you're right. Because I, I think I, I kept thinking about like, okay, what is like, do I just like, like, why do I like this? Like, what is it about like this piece or like, what is it about this type of artist or yeah. Cause you're right. Because like the, the, the Marcus Stabi thing is like, so like, I think they are kind of, um, our infatuation with a, uh, an artist like Marcus Davi has to do much more with like his world and his ideas and his persona that he created and how he kind of approaches art or yeah, he's how, it, yeah, how his kind of angle is. Um, but with, but with, uh, with Mark Flood, again, like there's like this, there's this thing that I kept, like, I'm like, I was like comparing it to like, okay, like if I compared like a Titian or a Peter Paul Rubens to this, like, how could I, you know, with, with the amount of work in this and the amount, but like, again, like I kept thinking about like, yeah, but it's, it's two different worlds and they're reflecting two different things. And like, there's so many different factors to, to what they're creating. And I, I really started, cause I, then I started getting way, really into it. Then I kept thinking about, you know, like these, these, these almost like frozen moments in time. Cause I feel like he kept, uh, there's one thing and there was a couple things in Berlin I'll pull it up where it was like like almost like what do they call it like Paul Mall like cigarette ads or um there's a Marlboro one but that's like kind of something different um there was a capturing, capturing time yeah and like and like and I, and I was thinking about like these kind of moments in okay, with average because like I like I like I like the idea of like, like playing with advertising and just like marketing and consumerism and is that kind of being a theme? Because like, I think with marketing or advertising, I started thinking about like, these are such transient images that we see every day, but they're, they're constant in flux and change. They're always moving and changing. And, and, but they so accurately to some degree reflect the kind of mindset of a consumer of that specific decade or era. And when you pull up like something like this, like I saw this one of glimpsed into my consciousness. Um, and I just started thinking about like being like a kid or like, you know, you go into your, your, your friend's room, he has posters of like, you know, girls on dirt bikes and, you know, and like just like the advertising that reflected, like, I don't know, like that, that kind of cultural moment. Yet I think we don't highlight it because I think those things are so ephemeral, you know, they're so. Nudie, nudie calendars. You, we got to get, we have to get back on the, the wrench. Uh, T toolbox uh i know right my like my grandpa had like i honestly like <laughs> low-key like funny story like i used to go into my grandpa's like workshop and where he'd have like his motorcycles and like they'd be working on something or they'd leave and i'd go in there because they have like fucking oreos in there and i look over and they just like tits everywhere just skeptical of america and those who dominate its spotlight but I guess, I guess back a little more on like what I meant by that was like, like we forget, I think, I think it's just, there's like the, we're forgetting. Like, and I think that's something that's so powerful about art sometimes is that they, they bring something up that you may have forgotten or that no one highlighted or dissected enough or put it in a context like art. And I think when like they pull up like, like these type of images or, um, the uh the more ab or like, like those signs he had like signs of like you know like restroom this way or um i gotta find that fucking berlin one i don't know why i can't find it anymore but i think i think when like you put those moments in the context of art you reflect on like the validity or like just that moment in time and i was like like yeah like like, like i don't know like maybe it's not that deep but i was like no one talks about like you know when you see like old like vintage images like of like old ads and you think it's like the most corny shit ever but like it it's so accurately reflected like okay this is what people are, are liking consuming you know what i mean yeah yeah i just it's, like that there's like a cynical taboo nature to the the images and the phrases that he comes up with um i think again i think the text 
I think there's, I think the text takes it to a different like level for me personally. Um, because without it, I think it's, if, if they didn't have any of the stencils and it was more so the images, I think it would be interesting, but I think it would be lacking something so important because I, I think the language behind um, the work is maybe the most invaluable characteristic. Um, can I screen share for a moment? Yeah. Because I wanted to get back a little bit to drop a letter and speaking about the unspoken truths and um, peeling back. I feel as though he's peeling back the curtain on what this commodified capitalized system has um, affected and uh, contradicted itself um, through that use of the stenciling on every day, whether it's the, the encasing or the top of uh, a gas of a of a of a gas station uh, machine or um, the backside of a canvas as opposed to the front and not even using the entirety of it um, and, and, and revealing. Like his work, the work is so much more about the message than I guess like the craft of it. The but I think the craft is, it isn't, it's within, like you said, the irony, this realm of irony, but I think that he takes, I think that he, 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 he extends it beyond like a facade or a, um, a joke. I feel like there is what, what's valid. We had that, that conversation about what is valid um, in, in terms of art. And there was this really interesting piece that was writing about it's what art is, is is not an interesting conversation to have but what is it that artists do is and it talks about bayous and bruthers and artists as publisher artists as landlord artists as curator lecturer advertiser and i think that he falls in that category of artist, this almost multidisciplined, um, he, he's the, you know, the eye above, but he's also within, you know, he's an artist, but he's an everyday, you know, observer and commentator of some sort. Commentator. And, and it's not, forced you know it's not art i don't i don't it, it is and isn't art for art's sake i, I feel like i know what you're saying it's not trying to be it it's but the interesting part is it is because when he you know like the the message or the because it, it seems to be like it seems very political but he talks about it not being political at all and how it, it wasn't until this uh, photographer George Hickson con convinced him to create an ex the, the political set of works which turned into 1992 um, but that was early in, earlier in his career so maybe it did sort of form his um, ideology but yeah let me throw this his screen up. So I just have a bunch of images that I was fond of. Do you see uh, it up here? Okay. So 
I'll start over here and I'll work my way over. Let's pull this up. See, so yeah, but I guess let's before, get, let's before, give you, it. before you get too far, or before you start, like, like you brought up a good point. It's like maybe like my perception of, I guess, what what is the purpose of art, or what is what is art supposed to be? Like, art isn't boxed into you know you know four different disciplines. It's not just the, it's not just like like the craft of those four disciplines. It's like the kind of I guess more than questioning, but almost like commentating, observing, bringing up. You know, it, it's it's more. I I, I don't know. I, I'm really putting into. I'm really reflecting on like how I define art and what's what's its purpose. But no, I'm just I'm just kind of thinking out loud. But yeah, it definitely had me thinking now. Yeah, I mean. I think that's like I don't know. It's it it's to some people maybe a cop out, and to others it means quite a lot, quite a bit. Um, but I think first and foremost, um, as as valid as the 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 text is, which I um, I, I I sort of uh, I sort of deemed the characteristic that was the most appealing to me but it's a toss-up between the text and the the eye because i think the placements of the text are just as important sometimes as what they say and i think especially in one of these images that should be um saved here it's like a pyramid or a hierarchy of uh having an audience and it's, it's in a way it was similar to this here this um uh, probably like 15 foot blocked um painting that says whore museums gutless collectors blind dealers alleged artists and there's another one that says like stalker, like really big fan, like some like fan audience. And like the negative space that he has with the, with audience being like the foundation and it being written in the bottom right. And, and the, um, the stalker at the top in the most condensed space. And it's almost claustrophobic um um a, just just viewability just the um i wish i had an image of i have so many of them here but not that one but that was the one you're talking about though the one that's stacked on each other yeah i'm just gonna mark what i think this was from either bitch moves or Chelsea whores. But yeah, right here. Bitch moves is such a good fucking name. <laughs> this is Mar this is actually from um again him playing with his name. This was Merc Fluid was the name of the collection or the exhibition I should say. But here it's cause you, like like it's not it's 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 beyond what it's saying it's what draws me in is the physical um the imagination the the vision that he places in front of you um and like i said just the decision making and the use of space and you know, obsessed stalker, obsessed fan, really big fan, fan audience. And I don't know, I think each one sort of represents the word really well, like in, in a maybe vague way. And this is, you know, maybe this one, as well as the shell sign with the fuck your mother written, which I'll, I'll show in a minute. Th those have maybe a more vague um, presentation, but I think of audience, I think of a group of them. So I think of like 
having this this extra space but also the space within your mind like if you're a fan if you're just in the audience like you might just be there because your friend bought a ticket to a concert and or to a show and you're just like tagging along you're part of the audience but if you're a fan you know it's a little bit more refined like you're maybe a bit you know about the the hit single you know about the the previous ep really big fan it's taking up more of your time, more of your, your space, maybe have posters on your wall. And then obsessed fan and stalker being like, so like in your bushes with the camera and, and, and the distance between the artist and the audience. Um, I think you're spot on with like the placement of the words, like, and, like how important that is because yeah, like, like the audience has that space from the actual artist or like the space of like whatever the subject is. Yeah, and you're like fan, but like, I think what's interesting about this kind of stacking is like the obsessed fan is almost like, it, it just bursts out of the scenes. It, it doesn't even fit into the block. Yet the stalker, you know I mean? It, it looks like it's going in some type of order to where it's about to blow up and stalker maybe should be bigger, but stalker isn't, which I find different because I think a stalker is more sophisticated. I think a stalker has more of a strategy. Um, There's more emotion maybe in the obsessed fan to where it's like just geeking yeah. out and being expressive like physically, whereas the stalker is a little bit more med like premeditated, a little bit more yeah. focused, more centralized. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Like stalker would be like more of yeah, like a, like a strategic fan. An obsessed is just some, someone who's manic. But I guess let's let's go to Chelsea Hoares here, to um, so we don't forget about. Lied. There is one painting. I and it's, I think it's literally called Whore. and I don't know why. When I it just caught me off guard, and I just started cracking up, because it literally is just like, like a sunset pic with like a like a stick figure, and then I'm like, all right, what's the name of this one? Whore. I'm I'm gonna get it to a couple of those like from whatever collection that was, because it had the Exxon one with the stick figure. Yeah, and I was like, that's hilarious. Um, we'll start here. So, 2009. So, we started 1992. I know Karma Gallery 2020, sort of, that have you can buy a book, you can buy pr different prints of the variations of the American flag that he's created. Um, Dude, right? like and some of these may be new productions, but the originals and the paintings we showed of Nixon, Nixon, Bush, and, and Arnold were from the 90s in real time. Um, but this, this this paintings one, and he uses these arrows on these paintings a, a bit. And it, I think there's an arrow on the bottom of the one upcoming one with the shell. And it, that one's titled Direction. Because I was trying to think what that one meant. Because some are are, are I think, more... Like, there's a couple here that I think are spot on in a way where it exemplifies everything that he's like just subconsciously vetting or presenting. Um, but this is sort of, a, I think, a staple to an extent of his, of his exhibitions. You see these additional paintings, uh, paintings. Um, and here he starts with 25 additional. That'd be funny. I'd like to see a, a, a fashion designer like put like a, a, maybe like a mad, that would be kind of sick if, they, if a designer had a collaboration with Mark Flood and they almost just had like, it could be a piece of clothing or it could just be like a first look that was kind of like almost like this sign that like you see like a Chick-fil-A like corner of the road, you know, come by Chevrolet on 75th, like this this signage that just said, you know, 54 additional looks. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I could see like Ben Mod doing that. I could see, I could see the, the, the ironic designers tapping flood. But here you see the facial disruption and distortion is another um, element or uh, in a way similar to his pseudonyms or his you know, almost alter egos. Um, here. I like he, the idea. I, 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 I just remember like 
like in like one of the videos that I was watching, like that woman interviewing him, and, and like like the doppelganger clearly just was not answering any specific que- uh, questions. But he's like, yeah, you I mean, like, and then she's like, so you're, so if I go to your exhibition, like, it, you're gonna be there, right? He's like, yeah, you have to go to my next exhibition to find out, and like, just kind of just like, just like baiting her the whole entire time. Yeah, like in like in real life, like life troll. But I was just gonna say that his his like multiple personalities that he embodies, I feel as though tra- is translated through his multiple identities of um just artistic practice because i feel like he has like these more collaged um you know anatomical uh portraits and then he has the stencils with with text and sometimes a base paint other times you know the lace paintings that that, that i think they were that was um what made him his first real money which was painting over lace then removing in the, the pattern underneath which created Again, the negative space of those, even in the, even when there's no images, there is like this, just really, just un- understanding of space. And I think that even goes back to before we get too far here, with the, with the images of the the, the pyramid, the stack here, and we we're talking about the space. I think that could even you know back to that celebrity, back to that the idea of like, I think his like it's almost like mocking like celebrity like f- fandom or just like uh obsession li- like literally the obsession that we have with certain things and not understanding what's like valuable and I have that bieber one too you ever, do you see the bieber uh it's almost like like a like a like a child's like uh wall oh like you know like cut out magazines and it's all bieber was it a flood painting yeah, it was something he did for I think one of his more recent ones, um, and yeah, it was it was all these Bieber cutouts. But there there is something with this cult of celebrity that, yeah, that one. Yeah, there's a like a couple where it was all just these like pop cultural magazine and advertisement and cutouts. Um, and and from his own uh, catalog of of stuff as well, but here, but yeah, like for these, like, it looks like he's like I think he so bluntly points out and makes you like realize how ridiculous it is to just obsess over these these people. Like he's so bluntly he's like, look how stupid you are. For well, he was in eighty one. I I think he he was started his band that he's been in. I'm not sure if he's still, maybe they play, uh, maybe they, they play some, some annual shows, but the, the name of the band was Culture Side, which was a translation to uh, Culture Killer. Um, and it, the, you know, I'm sure it was like within that, I mean, the seventies and eighties that the scene of the music and art scene in Houston was where he developed his uh i would probably i would would say his 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 initial interests or understandings of the society that encompassed his uh everyday life and um it comes from that punk that 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 countercultural um deviance um and i think from that experience that experience alone i think yeah foreshadows uh, these pieces, these works, these cutouts, these photo collages. Like, I feel like he's at his base, like a photo collagist. Um, yeah. Found images, the, uh, the image world. That was the, something else that I think he um, uses to make, uh, a, to make a point, but at, but at the same time, despises as well as the, the the world of image the image the images the um constant uh inputting and outputting um but not to get too far off base here yeah, yeah i mean okay. here is the canvas with the uh it's not taking up the entire it's the back side and 
you know, I've seen Virgil, I think with the, uh, his billboards played with this and had his tag on the back, but I like how he almost shrinks the size of the canvas, but he still uses it as a background. Um, I'm pretty sure this is, um, what's his name? Anderson Cooper. Yeah. Um, Okay, this, this this is one of my favorite ones. What made me laugh? I just thought fuck of that. Your... <laughs> I just thought of that fucking goon movie. He's like, he's like, fuck your mother. <laughs> and the, the the all that I could really come up with as uh, an an explanation for you know the title direction with the association that he's having between i guess gas companies shell station and i just I, I i thought of it as like direction being on the road like this is almost a symbol of Amer of americana that you will you know route 66 no matter where um you will you're, you're gonna have to stop to refuel and in passing there's that inherent uh pace that is associated in the you know the the fuck you middle finger that i think at a truck at a truck stop or you know along your travels just in life that, that um you react to in that just like f you but it's also I, it could just be an f you to the, the 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 gas companies these institutions these um controlling you worked for a gas company i'm pretty sure at one point right i i'm not sure i think that'd be a good uh like a taxico or what is it called taxico um yeah no i mean like that's just such a i think any type of gas or any type of like i think like western like Middle East kind of um, America, I'm sorry, not Middle East, Midwest, like America, like those type of symbols are so like they quintessentially American that I feel like if if you're going and his aesthetic is clearly like like not riffing but using these type of American tropes that are like I think I don't know it, 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 it's something about the like, I don't know what it is though that's the thing like. We gravitate toward these certain colors. Like there's, there's, there's a certain stratum of artists like in America that use these certain colors, that use these certain symbols, um, that play with these certain themes. And it's always like really good. Like, you know, like those, those certain, like those Richard Prince kind of, like he even did like a certain, like, like that's what I was gonna talk about, but we can talk about it after, but what's this? I just love, this reminded me of a Nick Knight photograph. I love the, colors and the melting um nature of like the, i think this may be one of the lace paintings um but i think this one it's it's the two-sided yeah. <laughs> uh, the, the two-sided face the, the harvey two face of america you know there's at least two sides and you know the like the, the community breakfast this 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 thing that gives and then you know methamphetamine <laughs> that that takes and this but this how they all bleed into you know they bleed into what with within uh, through one another well um, I, th I think if i if i think about something that is so american or just so part of like our cultural maybe more so back in the day than maybe today but still think today is like this type of suppression of truth like if something you know what i mean like there's things that you just don't talk about or things that i i just know even my, in my own personal life where i think you just like things happen that are terrible and but like no one talks about it like no one like really dissects what happened they kind of just take it at face value and like suppress it and this is like yeah like it don't this is like just like letting it bleed through to something that is you know, on the surface, so, you know, nice, like a Montessori kind of thing with pancake breakfast, but, you know. Elementary under, school. Yeah, it's like under the surface, like, you know, like, there's something so dark that I think 
he's highlighting the suppression of like, the American way. And in a way, all these things are, are, are found items. They're things on the street. The streets, you know, that's sort of, it, there, there's there's no there's 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 no lack of truth in in the in a street culture you know and i think I, you know it, 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 there's so many places the emphasis could be pointing at and i think it's probably not that um you know i don't think it has to be read into that much but i love this um, I love this one in particular, the Meth Community Breakfast 2009. Spray paint on crop with sign with metal support. Because it's just a sign. The same way the shell, the shell symbol, the, this community breakfast um, signage, this um, build prisons, dig graves. Again, sp spray paint, stencil on top of a bail bond um advertisement sign and then build prisons dig graves overlaid you know this is a more i think s straightforward yeah uh, example of the contradictions that may be a um, operation or business you know this facade this you know we're here to offer a helping hand but really we're just a cog that you know is helping maintain this vicious cycle yeah. of of uh you know lawlessness or criminality in 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 in, in particular um this this to this image it just it, it almost brought me back to the the Dennis Hopper conversation and how, you know, this, this society, this American society has, you know, it perceives and it, and it decides who's a villain, who's a criminal. Um, no. And the ugly side, it's, it's a ugly art that, that, that unveils the ugly side of uh, a culture. I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, like, this is definitely, like, the most, yeah, like, blatant uh, example of this, this, uh, this kind of, like, this, this so obvious, like, alternative motive, you know, mm -hmm. of, you know, like, advertising, like, you know, I, I, just, I just think, like, something, like, I kept thinking about was just, like, this, this kind of approach to advertising, like, the meaning behind advertising and like, consuming, or just, like, promotion in general. Um, or like a, like a sign in some way is telling you something. I think, I think the, the, the vehicle that he uses with signs, I think it's supposed to tell you a direction, a, a, a certain, a certain uh, rule of some sort. Yet oftentimes, you know, it means something else. And I think him using the sign and then putting something else on it, I think plays with that kind of theme again. It's like, he's, it's one thing that we say one thing, but mean the other. We brand things certain way to make you feel a certain way, but ultimately it's going to make you feel the opposite. You know, it's, it's like almost like, yeah. And even with the editing and like the filtering of the family photos and, you know, cause there was a article in the SF weekly talking about one of his exhibitions and uh, social media's codependency with social justice. And I think there's certain works that are very much, like uh, a Tumblr montage or a um, a response to 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 like the world of image to to but to the 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 technology or the or our association with um, our association with with logos and um you know like it, this example here this installation view with the amc theaters and microsoft and the sprint everything sort of um like taking up each other's one another's space and I, something that chase said that i really liked was um 
chains are hell. And I, I, that's what I think it was. Um, let me bring up the image that he said it to because it'll be, you know, you kind of see it here. Um, all of the corporations and 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 Viacom, 3M, and then Civil War Battlefield stenciled above and almost like this this painstaking drip of of blood and and what I believe to be leaves and barbed wire fence. Um, yeah, I mean, this is like, I mean, this is like the corporations and the biggest corporations dividing and trying to, yeah, it's a huge competition. Like a huge competition to see who they can, who they can encourage to be a part of their illusion to some degree, who can buy into that, their ideas or their products more than the next guy. That's through marketing, that's through persuasion, that's through encouraging their capacity for that illusion. This, this was the image, it was the Olive Garden sign, this turquoise purple, like Charlotte Hornet colorway, and go to hell, stenciled on the bottom in this almost feverish sun palette. Um, but when he saw this, he said, you know, he's like, chain, he said, chains are hell. And I <laughs> similar to this with the Burger King and uh, update your resume. I think, you know, they're both, again, it's self-deprecating, but, you know, it's, it's almost, again, it's something that is too real to be said at you know thanksgiving dinner like it's it's sort of these unnerving you know these these squeamish questions these uh in a, in a similar way to his like use of space in his work and that's association to the role of an artist or the or or the role of a civilian and who they you know bend a knee to and worship um it's also it's also honest in a way that you know most uh most work you know, shies away from, I wouldn't say most work. I think there's a lot of work that um, tries to, attempts to subvert um, its field or its, um, what, 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 it, what it is being controlled by and controlling. And maybe that's a part of, you know, not, I was almost not even, not even a physical or not even a, not, 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 a, but beyond a chain restaurant, but like this physical chain that, you know, like being a slave to the system and having to be, you know, it's not like how I said his first solo show was in his mid forties. He's he wasn't an artist that was successful and making, you know, livable wages at, you know, a young, you know, youthful age but he 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 emitted and you know processed his surroundings and flipped them into a a torch i feel like there's a degree of um light bearing the way or lighting the 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 path um, for artists who aren't yet, you know, associated or represented by a gallery or develop their style entirely. I think in a lot of ways you can look at it as like a warning sign to the hoops and the rings that you have to jump through 
or that you struggle with. And um, I think to have that much understanding of your actual, you know, space and the movements that are a prerequisite within it are um, something to take away from his work. Yeah, there is something refreshing that, like, I feel like when you see, um, when you see, like, an artist, like, not really take off until, um, you know, later in their career or older in their career, and I, I think there's, there's something, like, really refreshing about that. I think that, I think, honestly, I think if anyone, like, thinks that they don't have success yet or they're not going to be good enough, I always, like, say, like, read, like, autobiographies, and... I feel like, I mean, this, like, even doing this kind of thesis on Mark Flood, like, there's, like, this kind of, obviously, this kind of, you know, autobiographical like, bi dissection of his work and his life, um, and you see, like, you know, how he worked, like, these, like, you know, really mundane, like, teacher's assistant jobs, and, you know, like, how the struggle and his band not, like, you know, doing what he wanted it to do, and, like, projects failing, and, and really not making money, like, real money to, like, almost his 50s like there's something like you know so refreshing about that um and just how you know you to, to achieve some type of level of I guess I don't know what you would call success but if you're thinking of it as some type of critical acclaim or some type of you know monetary achievement I think you know this is a great example of you know how much you have to go through um to achieve something like that and yeah i think you're right like the hoops and the the kind of obstacles that he kind of overcame um to create his like his vision and like the time i think i think people i think people don't do not i guess appreciate or think about how or i don't have the patience to develop and an original kind of point of view but um yeah i mean this is this was a mark flood was a good example of of i guess that you know i think i think we both kind of like like that you know that um going street ads yeah i'm reading back at some of the notes i had on mediums that he worked with in refashion consumer products text paintings manipulated corporate logos he has the nasdaq as a symbol exhibition um, with the uh, the one work. There's like a couple pieces, a couple works that I thought were interesting. I noted that he, he almost had this like digitized like Rothko painting. And he also had very like Richard Prince-esque like Marlboro Men abstractions of like newspaper articles and I thought that was interesting, like how he almost like, not used, but he approached their aesthetics in a way and kind of made it his own. I mean, I don't know if you saw any of those. Like, the, like I think they're called like the muted Marlboros or something like that. Yeah, I, I, I think I saw some. I, I probably have them, have a couple in here. I ha There's so many great like little tidbits of information that I, sort of just scoured through Cele cele to celebrate society's relationship to contemporary signage i think that was his i think that was a statement for the bitch moods exhibition there's actually an interesting note or uh artist notes from one of his shows i'd like to read it in a minute but yeah this one like it's it's very much like a sex sells aesthetic like you know it's 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 rough around the edges, but it's like, again, it's provocative and it's, it's sort of disorienting in that way. Give the economy a real good blow job with fucking Barbie Ken and his uh, adoring lover. What do you think when you see this? Mm, I mean, I get like a Western vibe. I mean, I like, I always like, I mean, I really do like that font that he uses, like, with, like, those, I mean, we, I don't know what you would call that font, but it's almost like serial killer, kind of, like, no. It reminds me, it's almost like print, it's almost like that front page, 
Um, but I, it reminds me, uh, his work reminds me a bit of Jane Baumans, who I think came up in, in a similar time, in, 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 a, in, a, in a similar scene. Well, he's from Houston. Um, but even, yeah, even that, like, you know, I think he was being asked about, you know, the importance of growing or, or growing in like a, uh, a city like LA or New York, where you have, you can see the other work being created and be sort of have like a, a foot in the door of these galleries and, you know, his diversion to that model and him being like growing up in, and in, in his, in his, uh, his work, you know, being inspired by and, and through the lens of, of, of Houston and, and Texas and him not uh, having to, ac- having to accommodate um, that request or that what sometimes feels to be like a, a prerequisite or a necessity to be in like A, B, C environment to thrive. And just another example of doing it your own way. Um, like, like this, this is very much, I think that he has like, uh, he had another exhibition where it was just screenshots again, but just of like a Google image, like search. And those reminded me a bit of the new portraits and this does as well, where it's almost like the stock E image of like two, two younger women lingerie. Um, like this one too, Chanel number five. And then, you know, Tommy's favorite. <laughs> well, I, I don't know. I, I think like, yeah. Anal like, number five. I wanted you to say it. Anal number five. <laughs> this almost looks like a baseball card. Literally. No, I mean like, the, I, I, I like the kind of like dirtiness mixed with the sort of you know, what we would call the premier products of the world and how two are so both quintessentially American. Like, like they're so, so ingrained in our culture as being like, like both, I, think, I think the importance of both are so, are almost equal of like maybe like pornography and like luxury goods yet they're looked at through completely different scopes. One's completely hidden and seen as taboo and one is seen as like something aspirational. And I think, I think I just like the way he kind of puts them both on the same kind of page. And again, like showing that kind of a similarity yet contrast, or again, that kind of a truth that is like nested in both of them. Everything we need that is not food or love is here in the tabloid racks. Food or love. Yeah, this cult of celebrity in America is, I think, maybe the, uh, you, that's almost like this, the, where you can sort of draw the branches or the lines out, extend out from. Um, from the title of a survey that emphasizes his work in the 80s, The Hateful Years. So that was his uh, retrospective, The Hateful Years. You might think that Mark Flood has longer just takes for the decade. Um, this part I, I highlighted in bold. An exhibition of the artist's output during the era of Reaganomics, hair metal bands, and Gordon Gecko wannabes. Flood's multimedia works are caustic, often crude ruminations upon the effects of consumerism and capitalism within society. Who's the real Mark Flood? Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, like, again, like, he just, I feel like he's just commenting on, like, I think that I think when he uses like magazines and publications, like he's just commenting on how phony or how how I guess how it kind of tricks culture or tricks um, this inauthentic helping hand. Yeah, Uncle Sam. Like this is this. Are these similar to the to the blurred images you were talking about? Because I know you did like Coca Cola bottles and like in like these paint it almost looks like like a dig like almost like a windows like early windows kind of like digital kind of version of like a rock go um i think i might have it up somewhere but um but yeah i, I always i thought that was interesting like how he like took aesthetically um super famous artists that are american I mean, on the on the Law and Order image, it's very Warholian in like 
the scratchiness of the of the um, silk screen. Um, this was also part of the NASDAQ show, Maximize Shareholder Value. This was at the desk as you walk in. And then he had, you know, the place pinned and flooded with paper. Vote demon replicant with the gazing eye. And that was, um, I thought that was a very important piece here, was him commenting on arts um, or our relationship between, you know, people and pictures of good looking individuals who stare into your eyes. And that kind of, that goes, that circles back to the conversation we were having about Richard Prince when we were talking about the, the sonic nurse and the nurse paintings, um, the gaze and how that's been, you know, throughout history that in, in, in painting and, and what that was meant, you know, it was the stimulation and also the, the sense of power or the control and the, you know, the, 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 the central eyes or the centralization of the, the gaze or the, or the eyes of this thing but in uh, during that, you know, it's it's always been a woman, you know, it's been uh, like this fantasy of, I think like, uh, early on, the like the control that the owner had when looking at it, when it's hanging above his 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 home desk and in, in, in bookshelf. And, you know, he's kind of using it in his own way here with Nixon's stare. But, yeah, just our, our relationship between that, between, you know, pictures and, and how I think, you know, it's always been good looking individuals. But I think that he highlights the, the celebrity faces or, or uh, extremities as opposed to a... A, a fictionalized or a random, you know, uh, a random muse. It's the the muse has changed, but it's always been a, a it's always been a a fairly attractive or beautiful image in a very like stereo stereotypical you know way. I mean, I think it makes sense. I think I think we I think when we look at like you know an image or an advertisement or like a magazine with like these kind of figures in it. I think we kind of relate to them on we almost want to aspire to like be that, that kind of model of an individual. And I think all these magazines represent a, a, a model or a character that you kind of adopt, like any of them. Like I think you even pointed out, like I forget the name you pointed out, but um, and I think I think even the, the ones that he does highlight are ones that people most often highlight in certain decades. I think you know the Bieber one or the Billy Idol one that he pointed out, or you know, or like I mean, even Nixon as like a, a figure that maybe people associated like his maybe his like um, way of living, the way he thought, like like people like aspire to be a figure like uh, like like the president or like you know what I mean like that like that sort of like. And even the lustful again back to like the stalker like the lustful um you know the the, the like the this this like the vote demon or the, i think the most the word demon here you know it could be associated with nixon himself or the gaze alone and how over time you know there's like there's this lustfulness to the gaze or this lustfulness to a piece of art to like spending money on this what you know for most people you know when the, is a, is is a, a sign of beauty or something that they see as beautiful that they can relate to deep down inside that maybe you know is is sort of sheltered and not you know a, you not they not expressed and they express it through this painting but even that obsession or that like uh the to 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 
fiend or to be consumed so much by those intentions or those vices, those lustful, you know, um, just like the purpose of something. Like what is its nature and what, we know, where is that leading you? And I feel like in a lot of these works, there's that arrow and it's like about direction. Like, again, it's like these things that you sort of, that, that you, that, that you experience. A lot of it is, it's, it's, it's just what he came across or the things that, and I guess most art is that way. It's like, there's a person that's birthed from a womb and is let out into the world. And there's like, uh, you know, billions of uh, outcomes and it's sort of, you know, survival of the fittest. But, um, but yeah, I think there's a, 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 a wider, you know, global view um, that he his perspective allows his audience to look through um yeah i, mean, I never wished to be a politician i and i despise them i've always wrestled with it and i deeply dislike propaganda all art is about propaganda no matter how wonderful its cause may be i think it's morally wrong that's a major theme of my work i don't want to control how people think I want to show them how they are controlled by pictures. As I've said before, it's not about Sylvester Stallone. It's not about Barry Manilow. It's about us. Yeah, I mean that that, I think that perfectly encapsulates what we're trying to talk about. Is like he he he, he kind of just kind of puts on a pedestal or, or highlights those figures that we so often replicate. I think even going back to that the demon you know Nixon replicant. You know, I think. Like again, I think there's like there's almost like doppelgangers of 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 the Nixon figure or the people that align with his certain politics. And I think there is something about you know that specific character that people you know gravitate to. But I, throughout his entire work and like what like I, even like the Billy Idol one, I instantly thought of my like my dad's early like high school pictures and how it looked like he was idling Billy, you know. Billy Idol, you know, um, with his hair and his, his looks and, and, and yeah, and they're right. And like how, how we are consumed by the pictures and the advertisements and the publications that tell us who we are. Um, and why like he's using all the symbols against them. It's like, he's, he's taking control and, and some of the works it's like, he's, uh, in, in some way to how he deviates the image of, the individual he does it to the 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 logo that so many individuals you know maybe hide behind and you know alteration you know to the point where it's just an it's just barely um separating itself from the original uh from the original i love like the, the celebrate the moments in your and the cutoff and almost the inability, you know, to celebrate the moments. I think, I think life would be the word. What, what word do you think would follow this or finish this sentence? Celebrate the moments in your. Cause I just think celebrate the moments in your life. And I think like in a, in a way life there is like the key word and it's, a reflection of our own in 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 capacity or incapability to uh, celebrate or enjoy a moment, you know, we're we're too, or you know, not to beat the nail on the head, but just distracted by our surroundings as opposed to allowing our surroundings to center the the mood or the the celebration yeah yeah i mean i think yeah like we're, we're, the celebration can't take place because i think we're too preoccupied with our 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 self-image you know and or just or what people think and i think if we become complacent to what people think then 
you know, the, we're not, we're not in the driver's seat, you know, like. Even here, like never forget, but it's never forge or forget, never forge. Like, I think, you know, again, the history or the, or lives lost or memories or um, just, just your own last name you know he said it's about us you know saying you know it's about us like i think again the focus is uh has been removed from those things that are really what keep the water in the well and the engine oiled up you know so much of the of the consumption is you know because we love to do it because we've been semi you know control is a is a maybe too harsh of a word to but we're, we're certainly um disillusioned yeah now more than ever you know I'm proud to be an american like i think that you know is so relevant you know to to the conversations going on at least here you know in the u.s stardom and then these portraits um where the eye again the gaze the eye is the the teeth are distorted and again, it's like then the arrow, the arrow is back in 75 paintings. It's, it's almost like, it's almost like he devalues, maybe not monetarily, but like spiritually the like value of, of his, of his work, because he, he almost expresses what his work's about. And then he has these other pieces, which, you know, are you know, it's not just a, it's not just a, uh, an, uh, a start and finish, but it's like an actual core element of the show. Just having the paintings that say 69 paintings, another painting, another painting, but then mixed in with stuff with like these collages and these things that he, um, you know, from the outside looking in spent more time on but is able to almost render the other the null almost canceling them out by placing them in the same room in the same space see um, america fist the last thing before we cut this bad boy we're running on two hours now <laughs> That's a, it's about an hour and a half. Word. I guess I guess we can briefly note that he was the first artist to to accept Bitcoin as a form of payment. Twelve point three Bitcoin equals a hundred thousand dollars in two thousand seventeen. Pretty nutty. Yeah, and that was sold under the white company, which is sort of this gnarly, um, how did you word it? Or how did you put it? Mayor of luxury goods and across like the board, really. Um, and essentially being able to buy these luxury goods, watches, automobiles, um, clothing, art, painting yeah. through, through Bitcoin or cryptocurrency. Oh, um, just Aventadors. If I was gonna buy a, I mean, I guess if I had Bitcoin, I'm already like playing with the sketch life. But I feel like I just wouldn't buy a supercar with Bitcoin. That's all. I would, that's all I'm saying. I guess. Yeah. I, the, the, this, you know, this this is a this is probably my fa- like my favorite with the shell and the uh, you know maybe the most uh, the most. Um, <laughs> the, the the most deprecating the the lottery ticket uh poster board 
commit suicide, kill yeah. self, kill others. I yeah. honestly just from like asking my buddy or friends to like go cop a lighter inside a shell station and then walking out with a lottery ticket or a scratch off is like the oh, yeah. epitome is the epitome of like these this iconography some of they, they they do overlap and they do almost like like sort of they, they take they take up all of the storage um in your in, in i've said i feel like i've said space and i uh, a thousand times but you know it's it's one thing after the other it's stepping outside of your car, filling your gas tank, and then walking inside to the store and then buying this thing and then, you know, going in. It's, it's almost like a portal or uh, it's, 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 it's this overwhelming bit of uh, claustrophobia, um, Facebook farm. And then, yeah, these are the final pieces here from his retrospective the hateful years um when hell floods over um these are a bit more not bury not alberto bury in any way but just the the canvases have a more burnt and uh disrupted and, and, and sort of uh textured surface and the the scrawled text and the images are a bit more permanent. Um, and uh, yeah, here the, the tide box and the cigarette campaign collaged on a mountainous landscape and this, and I think this, the color here, these, these two blues and line drawn between I'm not sure exactly. I'm guessing uh, a, a businessman, political, presidential, and uh, criminal. And again, that line between the two and the connection or the disconnection um, between the two and stick figure on the orange man, Exxon Mobil. Um, the autonomy of a total service artist. Um, there's William Blake. What about him? You never know what's enough unless you know what is more than enough. Your screen controlling. 